Hello and welcome to this video which will help you with assignment 3 and that's making the little quiz game. So what we'll do here is we'll look at um, just creating one question and then I'll give you a couple other little pointers uh, maybe how you could also track the score. So let us do the first thing which would be create a question. So what we're going to do is ask a question here. So um, and like I said your multiple uh, you'll create five questions and they'll follow the same idea. I'm just going to leave a little room at the top because we'll come back to one other thing. So what we're going to do is ask question one. So question one. And so what we'll do first is just make a very, very simple print statement. So print, and I'm not even going to put a printf in here. Um, you could if you wanted to put the person's name in it, but it's just going to be text. So I'm going to say, uh, what is or which is, I guess, because there's going to be selection here, which is Mr. Fleming's current car. And then there's going to be a multiple choice question here. So we're going to, we're going to type these out. Um, I'm going to do them all as separate print statements. And what's nice about this is that it will just do a new line. Okay, so I'm going to follow a format, a, uh, let's see, a Honda Prelude S. R V. Okay, so that's the first one. Second one, print a B. And let's put a Honda S2000. Okay, next, let's put, whoops, got my quote C. How about a Mazda? Yeah. Okay, uh, we've got to do a few more here. Print. How about D, A, um, ah, let's go with a Rolls Royce Silver Wraith. Okay, and whoops, there we go. And well, give them five options here. E, uh, we will put a Smart 4 2. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's just see what we've got here. We have question. Okay, so very simple, which is Mr. Fleming's current car, and we have five selections there. So we'll be able to choose it. So what would we need next? Right? Logically, we need somewhere to put the answer. So that's what will be next here. So I'm going to just put answer is equal to input, and then, you know, we can, we put a little bit of a prompt here, so make, make selection. I just downloaded this somehow. Okay, there we go. So make selection. So now they can make that selection. So if you run that again, there, make selection. Okay. Now some of you might say, oh, I want a little extra space there. Remember, you can just do an empty print statement. Run that again. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. Okay. I mean, you could do that at the top too if you want. So we've got the question here. Okay. And they've got a spot for the answer. Now we have to check if the answer is right. Okay. So this is where our ifs come in. So we want to check if the answer, and I would suggest going with the correct answer first. So if the answer is equal to, now what they're going to select here is either, you know, A, B, C, D, E, right? The correct answer, of course, as you know, is C. And I'm going to put it in there as a capital, and we'll, we'll come back to that. So if the answer is C, we could give them print U are correct, right? Exclamation mark, of course. So that gives them, um, uh, you know, some, some response, right? Now, if you want to be a little bit more, um, you know, interesting, you could say, well, maybe if they answered A, okay? So what happens if they answered A? Well, that's not right, but that was his car. So that was Mr. Fleming's car. That was Mr. Fleming's car. Spell Fleming, right? In, I guess, from 1995 to 2002. Had that one for seven years. Okay, so yeah, so they now they if they choose A, right, they get a response. Okay, um, let's do one more. Answer is equal to. Let's see if they did B. Uh, so print. Incorrect. 
that is his dad's car. That's my dad's a lucky guy. Okay, and then eh, I'm I'm tired. I don't want to keep putting these things in. So what I'm going to do is just say else, right? And I don't have to put a condition in. Else, just print. Yeah, you're wrong. Very mean. Okay, just tell them the blunt answer. So let's just take a look at this, what's going on. We have a series of if, else if, and else. So this is sort of acting all as one kind of unit here, okay? And so what it's saying, right, is that if we get this answer right, if we put in C, you're going to say you are correct. If they choose A, it will tell them this. If they choose B, they'll tell them this. If they choose anything else, so if they choose, I guess in this case, D or E, it will say you're wrong, or anything else, right? If the person types in G, X, whatever the case is, it will say you're wrong. So let's try this out, just to make sure it's working. Okay, so there's the question. So let's just put in the correct answer to start off with. You are correct. So I put in C. Good. Let's try another one. Let's put in E. E. E is not. I think, oh, I think it stopped running. That's why I started trying to get it. There we go. You're wrong. Okay. And then, I mean, we could try the other ones too, but I'll just do one more. B. Okay, that's his dad's car. Uh, run again. Keep pressing this too many times. So, and if I did anything, right, if I just typed out query, 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 or whatever, it's going to say you're wrong. Okay. Now, the other thing to be very careful about is this format, okay? So we've got if, then, right, is going to check if this is true or false. So this is the condition. And then notice there is a colon there. You cannot forget the colon. Okay, the other thing that's important is that it needs to be indented here. So this indentation came automatically. Now, if you noticed as we went down, I had to go back and I just used the backspace on the keyboard. Um, and then I wrote this and, and then it got the colon and then it was already indented. Now you do not, if you need to do the indentation manually, you do not want to use your spacebar. You want to use the tab key, which is on the far left of your keyboard, just above the caps lock key. So make sure that if you need to tab in, that you use that tab key. Don't use the space. Generally, um, there's four spaces in, but I believe REPL here is using just two, okay? So they're indented two, and, and that's fine. Um, four can make it a little bit wide sometimes. All right. So the quiz is working and you could create a bunch of questions here, right? You could just keep going. And my suggestion is, right, once you get the one question done, copy and paste it in. So I would just take all of this, right? Control C. So I copied it, whoops, <laughs> and then deleted it all. Uh, Control C and then Control V and then work this, this is question two, and then just change it up. So you don't have to retype everything over and over again. Just be careful though, that you do change everything, okay? That you need to change and make sure you are changing uh, the right answer too. You don't wanna have you getting the wrong answer. Now, a couple little things. I'm just gonna delete what I just did there. Um, two things we can do to make this a little bit more interesting. So one thing we can do is we can import time, okay? And with the time module, hopefully it's going to be okay. I guess it's just because I haven't used it. Um, what we can do is do something called time.sleep. And for some of you, um, you know, this is sort of a, yeah, oh, sorry, I said, like a, just make it look a little bit different. So if I put in time.sleep here, so I put in uh, basically two second delay before it says make selection. So if I run this, You'll notice that the question comes up and it says make selection. Okay, so there's just a little bit of a delay. Some people might want to put that between each one, right? What is Mr. Fleming's current car? Sleep, right? Sleep, sleep. Don't make it too slow though, uh, because the user would get kind of tired uh, and bored, but especially if I have to mark it. But uh, the other thing is, right, if you just put a little bit of a delay, it can make it look like it's printing out. 
Um, so if I just sort of take this time dot sleep, and let me just make this like half a second. I think that's fine. Whoops, about a one fifth of a second. So 0.5. So what I'm going to just do here quickly is sort of go through. There's a quicker way of doing this here. Let me just sort of put these in. That's going to be quicker. Actually, probably don't need that one there. Let's do that. So if I ran this now, you can see they just sort of pop it. Okay, so up to you um, what you think. One last thing, and now this video is getting a little long here, is that you could record the score. So what you could do is right up here, you could create a score or points variable. And at the start, it would be a good idea to give them zero points. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, if as you work your way through here, okay, so when they get it correct, I'm just going to come down to here. So if they chose C, which is the right answer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set score. I'm going to reassign score to be whatever score was, and then add one to it. So what would happen in the first question is that score is zero. It runs through, okay, ask the question. If I choose C and get it right, then I get an extra point. So it would be sort of 0 plus 1, which is 1. So now my score is 1. And then you could do the same thing for score, for 2, for the third question, fourth question. And as they get it right, they'll add one point. You don't have to do anything if they get it wrong, because you just keep whatever the score was. So if I answered it wrong, then you would, you know, the score would still be 0 after the first question. At the end, when you finish the game, right, you could say, ah, oh, you got four out of five, or whatever the case is, okay, depending on what their score was. One last thing, we squeeze it in here, I know this is a long video, um, is you might have noticed that um, if I run this and I answer, just a second here, lowercase a, you're wrong. Ah, that doesn't sound very good, right, to get the lower one wrong. So I'm going to show you something here. Um, what you could do is you could put or space answer is equal to lowercase c. And I could do that for all of these, although I wouldn't even worry about that uh, as much. But making sure maybe the correct answer gives you the possibility of having a lowercase c and or the uppercase c. Okay, so they can choose this one or this one. Notice I have to put the whole conditional because this will either be true or false or this one could be true or false here. Okay, you can't just say big C or little c kind of thing. Okay, so if I do this now, oops, uh, impatient here, so it gives me the option. So if I put in C, lowercase c, There, <laughs> you are correct. So now it doesn't care if I get it right in terms of the capital C or if I get it right in terms of the lowercase c. Both are valid. And I think that's an important little thing to have. Okay, so like I said, you'll need five questions. So you'll need to put more questions in and then and copying and pasting is fine. And then at the end, you should give them a score. Okay, so that would be sort of the, to get a full marks there is making sure they get a score, so maybe they get whatever out of five. And if you want to be really cool, give them a percent.